Whatever floats your boat, because I was about to say, bro, if you're going to do more than that when she just said she had numerous UTIs and a yeast infection, that is desperation on a whole new level. Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha, aka GeekXX Chic, and we are back with another episode of The Boys. We're now on season four, episode three, which is called, We'll Keep, we'll keep the Red Flag Flying Here. Red flag, <laughs> yeah, so many red flags in this show. Where do we even begin? But yeah, last episode, we have, gosh, so much stuff going down. We saw Kumiko is still very much dealing with whatever her trauma is that made her act a little bit reckless, a little bit crazy. We found out the backstory of why Frenchie is so messed up about this latest hookup. And it is in fact, truly messed up. And then we've got uh, my boy Butcher. He came through with the truth, but everybody was more upset with him for lying in the first place. And um, yeah, they basically said he was out because of it. But in the end, he saved everybody's butt. So it's complicated to put it mildly. But I'm very uh, ready to get back into the episode, see where we're going to go from here. Ryan, I feel like he's on the brink of possibly going to find my man Butcher. Just lots of juicy stuff to get into. So let's get right in. But just before I do, a reminder that if you'd like to be in the know when I upload these particular episodes or anything else you're watching of mine, please join the fam. Hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you're in the know. All right, that out of the way. Let's get into the episode right now. I will forever be in awe of how Anthony Stark has, does such a good job of, of a facial expression that makes you entirely too nervous. Like, it's like, well, is he gonna laser everyone's faces off? Like those fantasies he had back in season two, he does such a good job of making it look like he could actually do that. Like his subtle acting is. Godless, non-binary socialists like them. Their depraved leader, Starlight, commands it. String her up. Wow. Wow. Wow, A-Train, wow. How do you not feel dirty right now? Yeah, Noir is stoic. Whoever the new Noir is, he really didn't do a lot of studying of the old Noir, huh? Firecracker and Sister Sage. Firecracker, okay. So he brought her in. Welcome, ladies. I mean, at least it's not a completely sexist suit. There's enough here to take down a bull elephant. Ten bull elephants, not taking any chances. I can get Ryan here. I can do some. Don't do it! What? Grace built the Aslet safe house with the specific intention of our box and soups. Little old Ryan. Not for long. That's not a good idea, really. This is a very, 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 very bad idea. Can you talk to him, Billy? Like he's, he can talk to him. Nothing about training him up to top on Amanda. So you said. I mean a joke. What are you gonna do? Would you train your boy up to be a killer? Listen, brother, you don't trust me. No. I'm begging you not to do this. Please, Billy. You can talk to Ryan. Remember this mit well, this boy was raised by his mother. I need Billy to remember this boy was raised by his mom for the majority of his life. Please. You are clearly punishing me for openly disagreeing with you, which you said you could handle, but clearly you can't. Do you really think I'd be that petty? Yes, a thousand percent. Hey, how about a photo with the new girl, guys? Yeah, yeah. get in here. Front get center. in there, make a sandwich out of right her. Right here. Like if she really cared- Make a sit. I'm sorry, Huey, there just really isn't anything you can do legally. You want my advice? Just work it out with your mom. You have a superhero girlfriend, just get her to threaten her. We need to talk. Um, just give me one sec. Are you gonna do it, Frenchie? I feel like you're gonna, I feel like you're not gonna do it. Oh God, or oh, never mind. Maybe something's gonna, is this guy hey, about to explode or something? Can I help you? Where are they? I'm sorry. <laughs> Frenchie. The hell An imbecile. It's gonna keep happening. Y'all gonna have to move your headquarters soon. Remember the talking part? Jean Renaud, Léon. Never heard of it. You're a thousand years old. Damn. Yeah. Frenchie looks great. Don't even. Don't disrespect. Wow. Okay. Oh wow. Use your brain, Frenchie. Frenchie, brain, 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 brain. brain. I can't. Did not tell you get distracted. Yeah, no, no, just destroy your family. Don't do. Oh, Frenchie, you're such a whore. <laughs> Yeah, I thought so. 
It's time we ban suits from the military, from private policing, and all other government positions. Don't you agree? Good luck with that. Uh, I mean, we don't want to seem as though we're prejudiced against them either. So Soups are entertainers, period. End of story. She's like, I want to pop your head right now. Don't do it. I know. I know you want to. Later. I love it. She's actually like a flip side of Homelander, but like a smarter, more controlled one. Yeah, all the drugs in the world are not going to stop this from being true, Frenchie. See? Oh, well, okay. That's that's one way, but I don't think it's quite what she meant. Just keep your arms up. Yeah. You're 80% limbs. Use them. Okay. Arms are up. She said you lanky. <laughs> oh, Damn. oh, fuck. That was hard. That was like 10%. Right? She wasn't even trying. Well, look, I know y'all ain't going to like this shit. I want to flip a train. What? You're joking. Fuck. It's actually a good idea. Yeah, or he could murder you. He did help clear your starlighters. He did. Guys, I know when a motherfucker's wavering, mm -hmm. okay? And A-Train, he's right there. He's ready. He is. Hello? You guys want to ask before you just up and fuck off? No, they don't. Oh, God. See, they respect you, Mother's Milk. Without blowing some dude to get there. Yeah, this is why women have such a hard time moving forward, because for as much work as we do, there's always pick me's who will go and completely dismantle that work. That is, you know who that is. No word of a lie, I kind of want this video game to be real. I mean, if you had a one month to live card, then that'd be something. Ah! Okay, Ryan, that's right. Nice. Give it back. Damn. Right up, right up the pooper, huh? It's like Mortal Kombat with these guys. You could never give such an inspiring speech if you even tried. She's like a virus. Like herpes just popping up when you don't need her to. Snap her neck. Snap her neck. Do it. So anything you need. Anything. He's like, you're in my way. Is there like a playlist I can use to get me inside his head? Shut really? the fuck up, Dwar, and everyone take your seats. <laughs> Bro, like this is literally the easiest job you're ever gonna have. All you need to do is be quiet. Sorry, so he's a figurehead like Arnold McDonald or God damn. Buster Beaver. Oh, I'm a mascot. Okay. Yay! Okay. Bye. Could you not pack those faster? Oh, actually, A train feels sorry for her. Sage here has some things she would like to address with the group. Is <laughs> uh, <Lara> sleeping? <laughs> oh, shit. Sorry, you guys, I'm not galactic. That's hilarious. The crime analytics, and given a starlight or some members of her team clearing these two men of murdering three home teamers. Yeah, she already knows it's you, Adrian. Why is everybody looking at me? Because it's your department. Yeah, but I didn't do anything. Exactly. Good. Okay. Moving on. What's next? He's just like, thank God. Kevin. I honey. please this. This forbidden romance is just not for me, guys. We don't need it. Open the door and look at me when we're talking. Why is she British? And we haven't been intimate in over a week. So please stop, 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 stop. Please. Just, I can't, babe. Ew. Are you embarrassed by me? Yes. Ew. No. Ugh. Like, kudos to Chase for being able to get through this. This is so cringe. Homelander is going to, like, laser that thing to death. Countless UTIs. Enough yeast infections to open a Panera. Well, you know, don't sleep with weirdos in bathrooms. I'm going to finally do it. I am finally going to fucking quit. You know you're not. Me? Whatever floats your boat, because I was about to say, bro, if you're going to do more than that when she just said she had numerous UTIs and a yeast infection, that is desperation on a whole new level. Don't do it, Dick Butcher, please. You can talk to him. I beg you, don't do this. I'm actually more surprised that those look like good cookies. Don't do it, Billy, please. Mom used to bake them every year for my birthday instead of cake. But no thanks. Good boy. Maybe later then. Maybe hopefully never. You're lying. Yeah, he can tell. I can tell when you're lying. Like his dad. How's your foosball? What's foosball? Exactly. 
Huey's guy? You jacked my brother's phone? Loaned it. I do work for the CIA. Tending to give a shit? That something stuck. You may have that racist white boy's heart up in you. You got a second goddamn chance to actually give a shit. Exactly. And that would actually be the best revenge. What you gonna do with it, man? That's a speech, M.M. That's a speech. It worked. Don't worry. But you're still standing here. Hmm. I mean, admit it, bro. You don't want to keep living like this, being around that man. I mean, yeah, it might end up getting you dead, but do you want to spend the rest of your days literally underneath Homelander's dick? Is that worth it? Because mm, for me, I'd rather like, let's end it. Yeah, maybe you shouldn't have gone on this when you're high as a kite, Frenchie. No, he's not. Look at his eyes. There you go. High as a kite. Sorry. Seriously, I love the way this show gets all these creative ways of like getting around the amount of violence that's in it. Like this is actually amazing. Not quite as good as Muppets though. Sir, can you not go following your hallucinations right now? What are you doing here? Just some family time. Damn. I'm sorry. It's too late now. I'm so sorry. No, you're not. You're not. If you were really sorry. Exactly. You wouldn't have kept doing it. Exactly. Sorry. Well, maybe not. The killing <laughs> part of it, but the sleeping with the sun was just wrong, Frenchie. You're free of me. Oh, look at you on your own. Complete and utter failure. Speaking of other people that need to pay, <laughs> face their past trauma. You only have yourself to blame. You're a murderer. These are sadly true facts. A monster. Maybe not that far. God, these people just keep coming. Who the hell are you? Is she a suit too? Is that your little sister? Ma'am, after the way you did your little drunk performance last episode, I think you need to be quiet. You can't be judging nobody that much right now. Both of y'all a mess. That's okay. Everyone at the tower always lets me win. It's no fun. Exactly. I accidentally hurt someone. What do you mean, her? They're dead. Are they gonna be all right? No, no. Like, I threw them. My dad says... I shouldn't even care. Talk to him, Billy. Please, don't give him the damn I cookie. I what you don't want me. I wouldn't want me either. No! Billy, fix it! Fix it! Right now! Them horrible things I said. I didn't mean them. He didn't. I have this habit, see? Of pushing people away. Truth. Because I'm a bad man. I ain't got no business but went after a kid. That's not true. And the truth of a matter. Somebody terrified me. That suck. Without making things right with the one part of her that is still alive. That scares me more than anything. And you know he's telling the truth. Why is this so sweet? Oh my God. Unexpected feels. Please don't give him the cookies, Billy. Don't do it, please. You throw him out? Oh, thank God. Thank you. Talk to him. That's what I said. Put way too much sugar in him. <laughs> Good man, Billy. Hey. Whew. Right choice, Billy. You made the right choice. You made the right choice. So? He will come back on his own and then he will stay. Because if you drugged him, he would have become Homelander. Are you working with her? Uh... No, I was just um, donating some clothes. So why is your heart pounding like a little bass drum? I don't know, because a psycho murderer is standing in the room. I, I swear on the life of my son. You don't give a damn about him, so that means nothing. She did call me a few days ago. She just wanted some help tracking. <laughs> there was more information. You don't think the next word out of her mouth might have been useful? Right? 
Like now you don't even know. There's probably more. Didn't you say you were gonna quit, Ashley? You should do it. I mean, it's not. Really? Look, you could quit. Homelander no longer cares about you. You just would have to like stay low for the rest of your life. Why me? What have I done to make She's you jealous, happy? duh. You really don't remember me, do you? Uh-oh, not a high school bully. Saying that God bless America on that day. I practiced that routine so fucking hard. And you sucked, clearly, let's move on. Turns out you told everyone that I had an ass fuck gang bang with the judges. Ooh, Annie, you bully. Look, I was immature and stupid. And my mom taught me to be ruthless. Do you remember? Take accountability, what Annie. Take accountability first. I don't talk to that sluts. She remembers at least. Not a rumor like that. Follows. It really follows you around. Oh, Annie, Annie, Annie! I'm so sorry. It was so fucked up. And that's what you should have started with, Annie. Wrong. Little mean girl bitch in there. And when I'm done, the rest of the world's gonna see it too. Actions have consequences. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I know she was a child and her mom absolutely influenced why she did what she did. But as I said, she should have started with accountability first. If this, if you remembered and realized she was telling the truth, the first thing you should have said was, I am incredibly sorry. Not trying to come up with excuses. But Christmas is for everyone. It's, it's not if you're Jewish day of the or year. Muslim or just a different faction of Christianity. Right? Like, I could not listen to this. I'd be bashing my head into the railing. I'm your motherfucking CEO, okay? Which means okay. you don't get you a guys, seat. Homelander has you super do. hearing. Can we just keep the chitter chatter down? You're only six foot three. Why am I the one in here? <laughs> oh, shit. Mm -hmm. shit. Uncontrolled fa you? factor. Just stay calm, but, you know, move your ass. That loudly? I'm with her. Like, I can't believe that y'all are like actually supposed to save the world here. This is so stupid because he can hear you. He can smell you. He can even hear your heartbeat. You have disbanded the Bureau of Superhuman Affairs, condemned the defund the soups movement, remove all books and teachers that teach critical soup Ooh, theory. This is so meta. Why do you want to be president? Like just some unchecked list. That's you. He really did a fucking number on you, didn't he? Oh, pot, kettle, shut up. We have to do better for them. So what Huey. kind of example are you setting by staying in the closet? The amount of illusions that are happening. <laughs> Huey? <laughs> Wow, Homelander was really distracted. I'm surprised he didn't hear Billy's heartbeat from the second he, or not Billy, um, Huey's heartbeat the second it was there. It's about to get messy in here. Oh, maybe the music is why he couldn't hear or wasn't as focused. I knew it was gonna happen. I knew it. As soon as I saw them, like, you're all dead. You're all dead. You're going down, Jesus. Oh, God. This is why I don't figure skate. Oh! Yeah, never get skating again. Bro. Thank you. Dismantle that later. Get out. What a mess. Oh my God. I knew it was a bad plan from the get go. Like, why were you, I knew he didn't have time to leave, but I'm like, when you realize that she was early and he didn't get to the spot, y'all should have abandoned. Like, this is why they're the worst team ever. But truly, Homelander must be getting old because how did he not like sense that? Like, it's really, I'm not mad at it, obviously. I know it's plot, but also when you think about it, could be a sign that his, his abilities are starting to be affected by age. So how'd the operations go, guys? Frenchie, I don't think you should be drinking. Bro, you're still high. Man is condemned to be free because once thrown into this world, he's responsible for everything he does. Ooh, deep. Huey has some weed in his desk. 
I'm not gonna. Can soups even get high? Oh, that's true. Well, no, they can't. Can they? Why? Oh, you're one to talk. We're not joined at the heap. We don't have to tell each other everything. Or you want to tell me who was that girl back there in the warehouse with the scars? Huh? Right? Pot kettle right now. Excuse me, Mom. I'm gonna get high. Mm. Messier and messier. I know it's rough, Huey, but it might be worth seeing if you can work it out if she is your last, potentially last living parent. Why what? Why everything? How could you leave me? You do own that answer. It hurts. My friends all say I'd give it a month, six months, a year. Is it postpartum if it lasts away. past a year? I didn't know that. Why would you? You were a child. He didn't want me to confuse you, so eventually I just stopped. I thought. Lazy. I wasn't cut out to be a parent. But you were a parent, though. You are. I'm really sorry, Huey, that I hurt you. That should have been the first thing you said when you saw him, truthfully. Why didn't you give him the fucking cookie? Boy wants to keep talking. We don't got to kidnap him. We can just fucking eat him in the way. Thank you. And who has time for that? Shut up! Who are you? The whole world is about to burn, Billy. We need the kid. Need the kid. For what? I fucking told you. We ain't turning exactly. him into an asset. He ain't ready. You asked me if I could train up my boy. You're damn right I could. Hmm. But it's not your boy. Twelve years old. And if he takes after his dad, or we figure out how to kill him. Noted. Get out of my place. What is that? Is that a blooming onion from Outback? Yeah. You want some? Yeah. Why are his gloves always on? It's funny you mentioned that. Shy is actually a good buddy of mine. He wants me to be in Honey Boy, too. <laughs> wow. Scriptus isn't there yet, though. Oh, the shade. You know, at first I kind of thought you were a bitch. You didn't even know her. Uh huh. I, I knew it was leading here somehow. Ah. Mm. Oh. Mm. 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 What about your squid girlfriend? <laughs> what was that? What was that? Been at William Butcher's. I can smell him on you. Soup 101. You're ungrateful? You go behind my back? You lie to me? Why? Because I don't like you, bro. Why am I not good enough for you? Damn, this is not his baggage, bro. It's just Butcher. Butcher. You love him so much. Why did you get him to be your dad? No, I, Thankful. I don't want him to Please. be my dad. Please. Like, no. Not his baggage, bro. Fuck. Fuck. And you're growing old. On. Oh, God. Not this. Not this. Go talk to your humanity. Go. I'm here. Yeah, go, go ahead. The way his psyche is snapping. Ooh, through the cracked mirror. Oh, yeah. Pull yourself together. Well done. You starlighters hate you. Ryan spent some time with Butcher and ah, boo hoo, you're a fucking mess. You have to be stronger, John. This is brilliant. You still crave it. That's not true. It fair. is. Make It'll it always be true. He's gonna turn on your blood. Everyone hates you. I was like, who's the one at the top now? You're never gonna be your true self until you transcend your humanity. What do I do? You need, need to, to go, go back, back to the start. start. Of what? John, you need to go home. Oh, does he need to? I don't even like Homelander, but I know that's a bad idea. I hate you guys. <laughs> God, this show is so on the nose, I can't. Wow, that was a really good episode. The amount of emotional like unpacking we did was crazy. Like what I really like about this show is that yes, it's about soups, but it's so much deeper than that. And they have so many layers to it. And in this particular episode, we're actually touching on basically everyone's, I think the only person whose baggage is not there right now is MMs. Everybody else had emotional baggage from their history that was dealt with in this episode. And basically bringing out the fact that you can't run from your past. Like you need to deal with certain aspects. Otherwise they're gonna keep coming back. Whether 
whether it's emotionally, mentally, or in the physical manifestation of a weird ass woman who's pretending to be the next whatever female superhero in the seven. But wow, oh my gosh, where does one start with this one? I feel like we need to go through each of the characters for this because it's all pretty deep stuff. I'm gonna try to keep this short though because you know a girl loves to talk, okay? Ooh, let's start with Starlight. I think hers is probably the smallest emotional baggage here. So with Starlight, we have the history now between her and Sparkler, is that her name? I can't even remember now, it doesn't matter. But anyways, this crazy woman that has been on a campaign, a hate train campaign of her since God knows when. And Starlight's like, she figured out, she was like, Annie's like, there's a reason behind this. This cannot be just about the fact that I'm in the seven, there's gotta be more. And she went and confronted her about it. And we find out they have a history that goes all the way back to when they were children. And we find out that Annie was a bully. And sadly, this doesn't surprise me because as soon as I heard pageant circuit, I went, oh God. If you've ever watched any of those shows about how this works, the pageant circuit, how the the way the moms are, the, the whole environment, it can be very toxic. I know that there's some girls who said they had a great experience and it wasn't that case, but in many, many, many cases, it's very toxic. The competitiveness it brings out, how catty that the people get, the moms become overbearing. Like it can just be really, really bad. And we already know that in Annie's case, her mom was a, her mom just cared about glory over everything. She did never cared about Annie's personal well-being. She never cared about her mental health, her emotional health. She just wanted this idea of what she thought Annie should achieve right down to giving her V. So unsurprising that unfortunately Annie manifested that at an age before she knew what she was doing was wrong. And we saw that like throughout season one and two, a lot of that was Annie coming to terms with the fact that her mom's influence was super toxic to her and that it was making her into someone she didn't want to be. And so that that's what, that was just a couple of years ago, right? Showtime, not quite that long, but you get the point. It was very recent for Annie to recognize she didn't want to be that person and that that whole environment was toxic. So unsurprising back when she was 13, there's no way she would have known, right? She was unfortunately going to be a reflection of that. I shouldn't say she was going to, she succumbed to that environment and became that person. And I say that because there are people who are raised in toxic environments who still choose to act differently, but it's not an easy thing to do. It's very difficult to overcome what's surrounding you and what the expectations your parents have for you. And it takes a very special person most of the time to be able to really resist that and do what's right, even though it may not be what is uh, what people are telling you is right. So, and the reality is truthfully, we're all like, we're, we're all kind of assholes when we're in our teens. Like, I don't care who you are. You did a few things during that time that you probably look back on now and cringe. It's a formative time for all of us. We all make mistakes. So I'm not coming down too heavy on Annie for this. The things she said were true. She was immature. She was young. She was listening to her mom, but it doesn't change the fact that she still made the choice to be mean. She still made the choice to be hateful and hurtful when she knew that it wasn't the right thing to do, right? It's not like she didn't know that she was bullying this girl. It's not like she didn't know that this was wrong. So as I said in the episode, Annie's first response when she recognized who this girl was and remembered what she did and realized that this was truth, she should have owned up. The first thing she should have started with was, I am so sorry. I'm sorry that I hurt you. That was completely wrong. There was no excuse for it. And I'm sorry, right? And then, you know, if she was open to hearing your reasons at that point, you could then go into, these are the reasons I acted that way. But she went straight into justification, defense mode, which is understandable. Most of us do that when we hear something that we don't like, but part of growing up and by maturing and I, in my opinion, becoming a better person is owning up to when you've done something wrong. It doesn't feel good, but it it's the right thing to do. And it's what we would expect if someone else wronged us, right? We would want them to be honest and take accountability for that because that's what shows that you're actually sorry or that you've grown. But if you start to make excuses and get defensive or that person does that, you're gonna be like, you're still, you're still, neg you're, you're, you're negating what happened to me, right? Because even though, yes, all those things about Annie were true, it doesn't change the fact that Sparkler or whatever her name is, had to live with the hurt and the shame of, of the ostracism that she went through, having people assume things about her that are not true. And especially that was a particularly nasty rumor to say about a 13 year old. Right, like having that follow you around the way she would have been treated even more, because as a woman, we already have to deal with a lot of stuff when it comes to just being a girl, but now having this reputation attached to you, I can only imagine what she probably had to go through. So yeah, I understand her beef with Annie. Unfortunately, I, I can't justify that. I don't think it's right what she's doing with said beef, but I understand why it's there. But I don't know, we'll see whether or not, but I mean, yeah, she's, she's on the path right now. She's like, look, everyone thinks you're so great. 
I know what you really are. I'm going to bring you down. So Annie's got this to deal with. And unfortunately, at this point in time, she can't really steer her off that path. I don't know what she could do to make it up to her. I don't think there is a way to make it up to her. Because I think even if Annie came through and said, yeah, I did all these things when I was 13, most people would get away with it but it's not gonna be enough, right? At this point, this girl wants to see Annie humiliated the way that she was humiliated. And as I said, I understand it. I don't agree with it, but I understand it. So yeah, she's not gonna give up on that probably while she's still breathing. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> But anyway, so that was one thing. So we saw that Annie later on was kind of not dealing well with that, but this is the reality, right? Uh, actions have consequences and sometimes past actions have really big consequences or long-term consequences. So this is something where I hope she can take the lesson that while she may not be able to make this right with this girl, she can at least be much more mindful of the fact that, you know, how she treats people, the energy she gives is gonna have potential consequences. And going forward, she can be more careful about how she deals with people. But I do think Annie's different, but it doesn't change the past, right? So that was Annie. Moving on to Frenchie. Yeah, he's not dealing well, right? He He's in a, he's really, well, this has been since season one though. Frenchie has never dealt with the fact that, you know, his, his dad's abuse and neglect of him, what he's gone through as a teenager, what he went through as far as getting involved with all these people who have used and abused him. His story is incredibly sad and he has not dealt with any of it. The way that he's dealt with his negative emotions is drugs and alcohol and it's not enough and sex, right? So he's just a big mess. He has been for a long time. Like if he's focused for a while, he can like distract himself enough to not deal with it. But the second he's calm, the second he's not kind of in something, it goes back to the, the old habits, that that issues with the shame. You know, we heard the voices in his head being represented by his old, what would you even call her? I guess, madam, you know, telling him, oh, you think, you know, this is your problem. Like, you know, deep down, you're not, you're nothing. You're not good enough, all these things. So Frenchie needs to deal with that. Like he needs therapy just as much as Kumiko does. <laughs> Right, everybody on the boys team, let's be real, needs therapy deeply. But anyway, he still has all of those demons coming up. And of course it's even stronger because what he's doing with this guy is so messed up. Frenchie, Frenchie, why bro? You need to stop listening to the lower half of your body. Like I was teasing in the episode that he was a hoe, but, and he is. But really it's just, as I said, it's that defense mechanism. It's his way of not thinking about, you know, his emotions. Sex is a, is a distraction and that's why he gives into it as easily as he does. And so I thought maybe it was about Kumiko as well, which I still think it is. To a little degree, I do think it is that. Because like I said, it's kind of weird. Like the energy between last season and this season have changed so drastically with them. And I feel like it's, it could be just friendship. Again, I, want, I don't want to negate that. Her and Frenchie being friends is great. I love their connection regardless. But I do think it felt like, based on what we saw of Kumiko last season, I do think she's in love with Frenchie. But I think because of all the stuff she's dealing with, she doesn't feel like she can get into that with him. And that's why she's putting that wall up, which is fine. Because truthfully, they're both so messed up. I don't think they're getting together any more than they already are is a good idea at the moment. But anyway, coming back to Frenchie, I think it's just a combination of things. This man's bringing up more of his past. We saw in that vision that he remembers everybody he's ever taken out, and whether it was because he was working for this lady or whatever. So he's got a lot to deal with and he needs to admit that and deal with it. Otherwise, he's never gonna get out of this cycle of, you know, using all these vices and hurting himself really in the process to try to deal with it. So yeah, that's Frenchie. And yeah, him and Kumiko had a little fight there because yeah, she's like, let me help you, let me in. And he's like, you're not letting me in though, right? Like you're putting up walls and pushing me away and you want me to open up to you. Like that's not fair. So that's true. Kumiko does have to deal with her own stuff or be willing to open herself up in order to expect people to do that exchange because Frenchie really has been pretty open with her. So, but this is something that is before he even met her. So it's like, this really isn't something that Kumiko needs to get involved in. It really is a personal Frenchie thing, but all the same, I understand she just wants to be supportive of him. But yeah, it needs to be like, if you want someone to open up to you, you need to be equally open yourself. Like, I feel like that's kind of just a trust thing we typically have as humans, unless you go to a therapist, right? <laughs> Where it's a one-sided situation. But um, speaking of one-sided situations, going into Kumiko, Kumiko still dealing with her past stuff. She wants to take down part of the, the ring that kidnapped her as a child and did all those terrible things to her. She thinks that that's gonna be what's gonna take away all this trauma, this PTSD that she has, but she's gonna discover very quickly that even if she does take the cell down, it's not gonna, it, it doesn't do, it will help put some peace in her mind to know that it's not continuing, but that's really not the issue. The issue is she still has trauma. She still has pain, trust issues, uh, fears, 
a, a, a difficulty connecting with people. Hello, she's got psychological, um, what is it called? Not, what do they call it? They said it in last in the first episode, but the, the fact that she can't speak. Um, I can't remember the name of it. Anyways, it's psychologically induced is the point. She is not speaking because the trauma trapped inside of her is so strong that she is scared to speak. Cause I think that she's scared that when that voice comes back, she's gonna just scream probably for weeks. <laughs> but anyways, so she's got all this going on. She went to go and find this cell and we see that she met up with a, with a little girl. And I said, maybe it's her little sister, but I don't think so. She, I think she only said she's got the one brother, but I'm guessing this is a girl that she came up with potentially in one of these cells, or maybe the someone that she met, maybe she tried to protect her. I don't know. She seems a bit younger than Kumiko. So I don't know that she would be, I don't know that she would have come up with Kumiko, but either way, they clearly have history and she saw Kumiko and then she immediately attacked. So I don't know. I'm guessing it's something where she's either been fed lies about Kumiko or Kumiko left to save herself and she feels resentment maybe, or maybe they were pit against each other. I don't know. It's hard to say. There's so many possibilities, but either way, Kumiko did not want her hurt. So I'm guessing it's one of the first two. So anyways, we see that Frenchie was like, why, like what, what happened? Can you tell me? And she just didn't tell him anything. So we also find out the story behind that, but I feel like whoever this girl is, it could be the key to her finally starting to walk down the road of her past and actually start fighting the demons that she's clearly keeping repressed right now. So that's Kumiko. Oh, who else do we have here? We have, uh, we can talk about Huey. That's really quick too. He finally just calmed down and got to a conversation with his mother, which is what he needs. He got to vent to her, which I said was completely valid in the last episode. Now, you know, that that's out. If he wants his answers, he's gonna have to come at her with a little less aggression. <laughs> and so he did that and she explained that the reason she left was because she, because she was depressed and sadly to the point where she was thinking of taking her life. And so it's, she felt like the only thing she could do was leave at that particular time. And so um, I, I completely empathize with that. I, I, I don't, I've never experienced depression to that degree, but I've known people who struggle with it. I know it's not an easy thing. And it's especially like this would have been, this would have been like what, probably 20, 25 years ago for Huey. So understandably things are much different. People don't realize how much advancements we've made in mental health and mental health awareness in the last 20, 25 years. But yeah, back in like this, you know, Anything before I'd say like the 2000s, mental illness was still looked at very, very, very poorly. And there was a, not a lot of information about it. And depression was often kind of treated like it was like you having a, like she said, like, oh, you're just a little tired. Like, no, it's so much worse than that. And nowadays there's a lot more awareness around it and a lot more help. But back then, especially, you know, like I said, for women, it was, you know, they were like, oh, it's postpartum, you'll be fine. But obviously it was a lot worse than that. So Sadly, the only thing she could think of was to walk away. And it probably was the best thing at that time because if she was thinking of taking her life or maybe it you know, could have evolved into something worse because you know she had a young son. So anyways, either way, that's the decision she thought was best for her. And I guess it was because she was able to eventually find a way to deal with her depression. But the part where I she loses me is that she said she tried to call several times to con you know contact Huey and, you know, explain herself but understandably his dad kind of wanted to protect him but the fact that she said she just gave up I was like mm, okay I get that while Huey was a minor but Huey's like over 30 <laughs> right he turned 18 a minute ago so when he became legal at the very least you could have sought him like he pretty much has lived in the exact same place so you could have sought him out when he was an illegal adult, found a way to see him and make your presence known, right? Like, I'm sorry. Like, I understand it would have been hard for her. I get it. You've been gone at that point for a while. It would have been like 10 years by the time he was 18. It wouldn't have been easy. But to me, I just am of the mind that like she made the decision to leave. So she should have been the one to initiate getting back to him and apologizing and, you know, making her side known when she was in a place to do that. But to me, it just feel like it was a cop out when, you know, fine, dad said no. But like I said, Huey's been an adult for a while. I feel like she just didn't want to face the music, quite frankly. And I get it. It's not easy to pick up that phone or to make that contact when you know you were in the wrong, but she could have. So if Huey chooses to stay mad at her for that, I'm not mad, but I think he's going to get over it. Huey's actually a very empathetic person. So I do think he's going to forgive her for it and they're going to move forward, which like I said, isn't necessarily a bad thing because we don't know what's going to happen with his dad at this point. So if he loses his dad, it is better for him to at least have a parent he can still connect to in some degree. Plus it's his mom, right? If you can repair a relationship with a parent, I always say like that's definitely the path to take, especially if they're not like toxic. So anyway, 
that's Huey's thing. At least that's put to bed to some degree and I think he'll feel a lot better now. And then what else do we have there? I think that's it for people with like history coming back to bite them. The other half of the episode, of course, was what was going on with Homelander and I'm still trying to get some something on Victoria so that he can bring her down since, you know, taking her out is not working so well. And the fiasco at the ice rink, like I saw that coming a mile away, but you know, it is what it is. But we did find out a few things like Homelander, we know what his long-term plan is for when she gets into office, like what he wants her to do in order to keep her secret. But even then he's like, I don't want you to stay hidden. I want you to tell everyone you're a soup when it's all said and done. Basically soup supremacy is what his his long-term plan is. But we see that Sister Sage did not agree with where when Homelander started going off about all the other things that he wanted to do when they were in power, she was like, wait, I'm gonna what? Like, I don't really, what? But anyways, as I said, I do think that Sage is up to something else and she just isn't talking about it yet, but I, I know it's happening. But anyways, so that whole thing went down, but I think it's interesting. At least Victoria kind of knows now what is on the, she knows, she already knows that Homelander's off his rocker, but now she knows more of what his, well, that she knows the plan, so to speak. Um, she is better, what's the word? I guess she can plan better around how she's gonna circumvent this, right? Because we all know that her ultimate goal is to take Homelander out at some point. But now that Sage is in the picture, this is something I think she's gotta take into account. But now, that, and also that Sage knows her power, but it doesn't really matter because as smart as Sage is, Victoria just needs to be able to see that woman. <laughs> She can still pop Sage's head before Sage will be able to do anything about it. So anyway, uh, so that whole thing was a whole debacle. And then, and yes, Homelander is still struggling. We're seeing that that loud sound that we've been hearing him have since season two, I think season two is when we started hearing him have that high pitched sound. He's, he's fracturing. And I love the illustration that they showed in this episode with the cracked mirror and the different, I don't wanna say personalities, but the different parts I could, you could say of his psyche. But the fact that before it was just him and the one mirror image, and now there's many, it could be a representation that he is, just, you know, that he is devolving into mental illness, which considering the way, the way he was raised and, you know, what's happened to him, I wouldn't be surprised if he developed a dissociative disorder to deal with it. I am not a medical professional, by the way. Maybe that's not the right term. I'm just, this is all TV psychology. <laughs> but anyway, I, I could see something happening where more of his psyche is fracturing with more and more of his descent into, I don't want to say madness, but it kind of is like that, right? Because we know since episode, or sorry, since season one, all Homelander wants is to be loved and accepted. And that comes all the way back from his childhood of being raised in a lab with people who never treated him like a child and having the first mother figure he ever had taken away from him. So it's understandable that is literally the, at the crux of all of this, that this, this freaky, scary, twisted man, underneath it all is a very hurt little boy who just wants to be loved. But at this point, it's not enough, right? He's just done too much damage. And the sad thing is that the prevailing psyche that's in there keeps telling him to kill his humanity, that, that that's the way to fix this problem, which is not. It's not at all. If Homelander was honest, if all he did was take Ryan and say, listen, here's my story, kid. I was raised in a lab. No one ever treated me like a person. I, the only mother figure I know was ripped away from me. I didn't know, I don't even have the experience that you do of having a mom that loved me. I've always been treated like a product. No one cares about me. No one cares about what I do. Just like how Ryan hates the fact that everyone lets him win. Everyone let Homelander win. Like, he's like, I was raised to be a monster and now people fear me. They don't love me love me, they fear me. And it sucks and I hate it because I am a human. He is a human. Like, yes, he's a soup, but he's a human. It's human DNA in that blood, right? So he's like, he wants what every other human wants, which is to be loved and accepted by people who genuinely care about him. If he said all of that to Ryan, Ryan would be locked in because Ryan is an empath. He absolutely is. So, but he just doesn't realize that. He just thinks the only way he can move forward is with more and more force, even though it's fracturing him. The more he tries to detach, the more he gets fractured. So it is a sad and complex story with Homelander, but that's what makes him such a cool character that it's not as simplistic as him being a bad guy. And I don't know that he'll be fixable. Like I I said it multiple times, I think the best thing for Homelander would be to be, sorry, would be for him to experience that beam his dad had, like take away the soup, make him a human. Yeah, he'd hate it for the first year or two, but I think it was the only way he'd heal, truthfully. Kind of like Maeve, honestly. Like, I think he needs the soup taken away from him. But anyway, so that's him. And we see that, you know, he's mad, first of all, that, you know, the meeting at the, the ice rink went bad. And then Ryan, of course, smelling that he was with Butcher, seeing that him and Ryan are not bonding. I genuinely believe he does not understand why Ryan does not want, like, why Ryan isn't like him. Like, he just thinks he understands what Ryan would want because he thinks that's what he would have wanted as a kid but he still doesn't want to admit the fact that he does not know this kid at all. <laughs> 
right? He does not know this child and he's not even trying to get to know him. So anyways, you know, things are spiraling for him. And yeah, if Sage is smart, she will definitely take advantage of that. But anyhow, that's him, Ryan and Butcher. Like I said, unexpected feels this episode. I actually teared up when, when Ryan, you know, I knew Ryan would show up because he does care about Butcher. But when he showed up and he basically let Butcher know that he, you know, it's the rejection that really hurt him the most. Like, like when he's like, oh, like what happened today or what happened with that uh, fake robber at the, at the fake rescue. He's like, I didn't realize that they scrubbed the fact that he killed him, but I should have known they would. Anyway, um, but yeah, him saying like, oh, I'm a monster. Like I get why you don't love me or why you don't want me. I was like, oh, Brian, my baby. And then Butcher just realizing that, holy crap, that's where this is from, right? So I love that Butcher did go and let him know that, nah, that was not you, that was me. I pushed people away. And when he called himself a bad guy and Ryan was like, no, that's not true, right? So it was a sweet moment. It was a beautiful moment. And it just makes me sad because I do think that Butcher could really heal from Ryan. And not that Ryan should be his healing, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I think their relationship could be so healing and cathartic. And I think Ryan kind of needs Butcher's blunt take on reality, if that makes sense. I think he appreciates it. Like when Butcher's honest, he really does appreciate it. So, and Butcher actually tries to see Ryan too. Like he's not trying to put something onto Ryan that he's not, like he did when he first met him. But thanks to, you know, Becca's plea and him spending time with him, he's realizing that Ryan is not his powers. He's not his father. He's literally just Ryan, right? So anyway, I'm so glad he chose not to drug him because that would have been so bad. I was just like, please God, don't let him do it. And thank God he didn't. Thank God Ryan didn't take the cookies. And he just like, no, we're going to talk to him. But now we found out that yes, um, what's his name? Supernatural's dad. Um, he is saying that basically the way the CIA is looking at it is that if Ryan cannot become a trained asset, they're going to take him out one or the other. I get where they're coming from, but it sucks. But at least Billy now knows what the stakes are. So I think he's got to have way more drive to find a way to get Ryan to turn or to come over one way, one or the other. Um, but I think Ryan's halfway there anyways, because Comelander is doing the perfect job of driving, driving Ryan away regardless. So anyway, we now know where that's, that story's going. And yeah, like I said, the stakes are up for Billy to figure out a way to get Ryan to work with them before somebody gets to him first, right? So I don't think he's going to have to worry about Homelander though. Like Ryan does not like that man <laughs> in any way, shape or form. So anyway, that's that. A-Train is somewhat working for them now, which I said, he's going to be flipped. Hopefully he'll, he won't get caught. Hopefully he'll be able to keep doing what he's doing. Um, I don't really feel sorry for him, but I do like that he's making right the right choices. Like he really does want to make it right with his family. And there's no other way for him to do that than to start being real. So hopefully that will not turn around and bite him in the ass. <laughs> I'm hoping not. But I'm wondering, that comes back to, I do think that Sister Sage knows it was A-Train, but she's holding on to that info for now. And I'm not sure why, but again, she's a big thinker. So we'll have to see. And we see that she's not happy about being part of the star. She's only a public part of the seven. She just kind of wanted to stay in the background, but Homelander, again, pushing his agenda, made her do it. And she's not liking it. Like, she's like, I don't want to be in the forefront. I want to be in the back, but fine. So she's not happy with the way things are going with Homelander, which is why I'm thinking that she is coming up with some alternative things. I think she always was, but she's probably realizing that that timeline's going to have to speed up. And What's worrying me is we saw in that last scene that she had, there was some type of weapon on the table that's bloody and she looks super depressed. So I just, uh, did she do something? And if so, to whom and why? I have so many questions about that. Something's going on there. Something's going on with her. Um, her and the D, I mean, I, uh, you know, I, I, this is, you know, sis is making a lot of bad choices. She's just rolling with the bad choices. Uh, yeah. I mean, I guess we should be happy that the deep is moving away from sea animals. I don't know. Anyway, we'll address that later, but yeah. Uh, good episode overall. Like I said, lots of emotional baggage this episode, like a lot, a lot of emotional baggage, but I think it's a good idea to get into this because that's what makes these characters interesting. And it helps to understand that, you know, why they do what they do as they go through this show and, and, move through this very complex plot that we're trying to get going on here. So yeah, I think this is a good solid episode. I've enjoyed the first three a lot. Uh, very scared of that little speech that we heard with Homelander talking about his future plans. Very meta, very meta. I'm starting to understand why there's a lot of people who are not liking this season, but you know, it's uh, what do they say? Um, life imitates art, sometimes the other way around. So yeah, good, good episode. I enjoyed it. Hope you guys enjoyed watching along with me. If you did, please show some love and I will see you in the next one.